What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project leaks around. The build date here is of 7th January 2024 and this is based on Android 14 of course. You can check out the flashing guide from the description box below so do not worry about that. Talking about the about section, this is how it looks like. We have the project Elixir logo up top and we have the wallpaper showing up right there and it shows your device is officially supported so that's really nice to see and this ROM is maintained by Krishna so huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. We have the Android version as Android 14. Let me just go back. We have the security patch as latest of January 5th 2024 and that is just insane to see that we are getting latest 2024 security patch in a custom ROM right now. And here the project Elixir version shows up as 4.0 and the stock kernel here is 4.14 perf plus kernel and the SNX is showing up as enforcing. In the system settings this is how it looks like and we also have the gestures and all and we have the double tap stuff. Then we have the swipe click screenshot that is actually working perfectly fine. We have the share edit delete and the scrolling kind of thing will appear whenever it's needed. We have the navigation mode right here and in the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke assistant. Yes on this corner as you can see it just worked perfectly fine. And we have the left edge right edge customization then the pill length you can customize and this is the maximum you can go but you cannot really customize the thickness. We have the back gesture height, then we have the gesture indicator. You can disable it if you want, this fill bar, and we have the back gesture animation and the haptic feedback. Let me go back, we have the two button and three button navigations. Press and hold power button action is there and you have the digital assistant as well in case you need that. We have the quickly open camera as well and there is the playback control. Then we also have the one handed mode that is actually working fine and we have the prevent ringing option. You also get a system UI tuner right now. It is still, I would say, an early build so there is this kind of things. And you will get the icon manager from here. You can enable the headset Bluetooth that icons from here. We have the remote disrupt, then the ambient display and the plugins kind of thing. It shows empty and in the ambient display there is always on. Let me just go back from here. We have the thermal profiles so you can set per apps thermal profiles to benchmark as I did for the benchmarking apps and you can set it to other options. We also get an elixir updater and this updater looks like this looks really really nice I have to say. And you can donate to the developers from here and you can also get uh, early access in case you want that. Now let's talk about the home screen. This is how it looks like. By the way, the launcher settings are very minimal. This is the pixel launcher that you are getting. So you can only disable the stations. Nothing much to it. There is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen or stuff like that. And to the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page and it is very smooth experience. No problem so far. And swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. Now the good thing is in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays light or like in the white kind of theme so it looks really nice and if you enable the dark theme it will of course go pitch black if you want that and these are the toggles that I have added I'm not gonna show you everything but yeah I do have the advanced reboot enabled and let me actually show you that I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here as I have the advanced reboot enabled and the widgets are also working this is the battery widget as you can see the animations with those and even the clock widget animation looks really really nice and on the apps and stuff, if you just tap and hold on them, the experience, it's just really, really smooth. And talking about the stock apps of this ROM, these were the stock apps of this ROM before I restored my Google App Data Backup. Talking about the basic things, yes, this ROM does show DRM info as L1, so that's really nice. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And in case you are wondering about the IR cluster, yes, that is actually working fine. Also, in terms of the play integrity check, it actually shows up as this device meets basic integrity. So I think the banking apps will be working fine. But in Play Store, it shows that device is not certified. But in case if you are wondering, yes, it does support the Google Photos unlimited backup here. So that's really nice to see. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, we are getting the Liga camera present by default here. And this is not the version 5 because the menus do not appear if you swipe down. But if you just swipe up, you'll get these kind of options. Yes, the dual video and stuff are there. And we have the 0.6x ultra wide angle lens, 1x, 2x, all the options working fine. And even in the portrait mode, let me actually switch the front camera. And as you can see, the front camera is working perfectly fine. Just took this quick selfie here and just notice the quality with the portrait mode. It has really good amount of background bokeh and stuff. So yeah, with this, I would say the quality with this, it's just really, really nice. And the MIUI camera or Leica camera is actually working perfectly fine here. No need to worry, but there is one bug that I'll show you. In the video settings, if you just switch to 1080p 60fps, then only you will face issues like this that is happening on my device at least. As you can see, the video is very choppy and it will just stop. If you're noticing, the viewfinder has completely stopped. And yeah, this is how it is. So I would say just stick to the 1080p 30fps or you can also go 4K 30fps if you want to. 4K 30fps up to it will work but do not shoot 1080p 60fps videos or do not switch to the 1080p 60fps mode for now and in the documents mode we have the enhanced option and stuff 
and you can also shoot pro mode videos in case you need that kind of feature all these functionalities are there but with the front camera you can actually shoot 1080p 60fps videos no problems with it it is working perfectly fine as you can see i'm switched to the front camera and here shows 1080p 60fps and it is actually working flawlessly no need to worry about it and in the settings panel this is how it looks like and it looks beautiful we have the search panel and on top it shows need some help or let me actually go into the settings again as you can see it shows innovate inspire ignite so these kind of random messages keeps appearing that's really beautiful to look at and here we have the essence that's where you will find all the customizations i'll show you this customization on the later part of the video but first let me talk about the basic things yes in the network settings and stuff you will get the private dns and stuff and we have the connected device and the bluetooth audio and stuff everything is working fine no need to worry in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness extra dim and in the lock screen we have the shortcut kind of changing option and we also have the use device controls dynamic clock always show time and info and there is a wake screen for notification in the advanced settings we have the pickup option and stuff in case you want to use that i'll show you all of those and we have the always on display scheduling option so you can schedule it for sunset to sunrise and stuff like that let me just go back we also have the extra dim and you can change the intensity if you want that we have screen timeout as well and you can set it up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme and there we have the dark mode enabling option in the display size and text this is how it looks like we have the font size display size etc options and you can also enable the bold text in case you want that we have the dpi customization the night light you can change the intensity and in the colors we have the boosted option then you can also customize your red green and blue strength from here we have the allow window level blurs and the auto red screen smooth display the pocket mode is also there then we have the double tap to wake wake up on plug and the custom display settings is there so you can enable the anti flicker and even the high brightness mode if you want to as you can see it just turns up the brightness so yeah you can use it outdoors but indoors it's just too much bright and the anti flicker or the dc dimming is actually working fine here and in the wallpapers and styles of course we are getting the really cool looking wallpapers i have been using this project elixir kind of wallpaper it looks really really nice to me and if you go into the more settings in the elixir walls these are the wallpapers the project elixir kind of wallpapers and we have the random walls as well these are the ones and we have space and some pixel kind of looking wallpaper but i don't see the live wallpapers over here i don't know what's up with that but yeah there is the emoji workshop kind of mode you can use these emojis if you want to let me go back from here and in the home screen if you just scroll down more we have the themed icons and the app grid you can set up to five by five then in the lock screen if you just switch to it you will get the clock options of android 40 and these are the lock screen clocks just notice how beautiful they are and there are plethora of options no need to worry i have been using it with this one and there is some lock screen kind of settings options in the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the battery usage the battery saver the battery optimization options and you can optimize per app battery over here then on the bottom you will get the battery temperature but there is no charging cycle sync option over here which might be a bummer if you are a nerd like me but nonetheless i have tested the battery life with the aku battery app and here let me actually show you the screen on time here shows as five hours or five and a half hours here you can see these are all estimated numbers but still i would say it's pretty reliable and the screen off here it shows 65 hours so that's almost more than four days of usage i would say and even the combined use shows as 41 hours or more than that so you can say that's about two days worth of combined use that's a huge amount of number even with my old battery like this device is three years old i did not replace my battery and right now the estimated battery health here it shows as 72 percent and in case you are wondering about the fast charging speeds yes the fast charging here is also working fine no need to worry about it in the notifications this is how it looks like we have the bubbles the conversations and if you just scroll down more we have the flash notifications and you can use this particular feature and this is how it will look like it's really nice in the sound settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls by the way the volume panel looks like this and you can expand the volume panel from right here and in case if you are connected to a bluetooth device you can switch the output device from here and we have the media then the vibration and haptics we also have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and stuff per app volume control is also there then we have the Dolby Atmos stuff and you can change it to dynamic video music etc. We also have the equalizer options, then the dialogue enhancer and also there is the volume leveler and stuff. If you want to enable all of those, you can. There is a clear speaker option as well and we also have the haptic feedback. You can change the intensity from right here. In the app settings, this is how it looks like. We also get the cloned apps feature right here. So you can use dual apps kind of thing. So you can have two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook, whatever you want to from right here in the app settings. In the game space, of course, you can add any game that you want to and you will get the gaming overlay with which you can enable the FPS. You can record the screen and stuff like that. And you can also do much more stuff like the disable auto brightness, disable swipe to screenshot, all these things. All these features you can actually get with the overlay. Now let's talk about the security settings. This is how it looks like in the device unlock. If we go into the settings of it, we have the quick unlock then the enable pin privacy. 
and we have the power button, instant lock, scramble, pin loud, etc. I have already added my face data and the fingerprint scanner is already set up. So I'll show you the locking and unlocking speed. So for that, I'll just double tap on the status bar and as you can see, it makes the phone sleep. And here, let me show you the pickup gesture. If I just put the device on the desk like this and just pick it up on my hand, as you can see, the pickup gesture is actually working fine. No need to worry. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, it unlocks. So yeah, the pickup gesture and the fingerprint scanner, everything is working fine here. No need to worry about it. And just look at the animations, how beautiful it looks while unlocking. And yes, in the lock screen, this is how it looks like. It's already trying to recognize my face because I have the face unlock setup. But yeah, with the fingerprint scanner also, it works perfectly fine. Now let me just enable the always on display. I'll just toggle that on. And here, this is how it looks like. Double tap to wake. Yes, also works perfectly fine. And just tapping on the fingerprint scanner unlocks. And here, from the always on display, just tapping on the fingerprint scanner, it just unlocks. Now let me show you the face unlock speed. I'll just point the device towards my face on the lock screen and it unlocks. As you can see in the always on display, if I just double tap and point the device towards my face, it unlocks. So yes, the face unlock, the fingerprint scanner, everything is working fine, but there is no app lock over here as of right now. It might be added in the future. These are the settings that you will get in the more security settings. Let's talk about performance. Yes, in Chrome, it actually shows 120 FPS, which is not there in most ROMs. Like in most ROMs for the Redmi Note 10 Pro, it does not show up 120 Hz or 120 FPS in Chrome. But here, that's not a problem at all. 120 Hz, it's working buttery smooth, no problems. And even if I open apps like X, just notice how smoothly it will scroll. And if I just go on top, or if I just load the Twitter feed, and here if I just scroll down, as you can see, just notice how smooth this is. It's a very smooth, buttery smooth experience that I have been getting with this particular ROM that I have to say. And opening a post and stuff like that, as you can see, it's a very smooth experience. No problem so far. And even switching between apps, it's not a problem. And opening apps and closing apps, just look at the animations. It just doesn't get laggy at all. Everything is just a very smooth experience. And in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. You have the screenshot, the select option. And if you want to go into the split top mode or split screen mode and the pause app mode options are there. And in case you are wondering about the performance benchmarks here or the n 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress on this particular build to give you guys an idea about the latest project Elixir ROM based on Android 14 on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Now it's time I'll show you the customizations of this ROM. So I'll go into the Essence and in here it shows Welcome to Essence and shows this kind of animation and there is a random message right here. That's really nice. And we have the theme section. Then we have the use custom theme. These are the options for that and we have the headline and body fonts. And plethora of fonts are here. Just notice how many options are there. Yes, nothing dot font and stuff and the Samsung font, OnePlus font, everything you will get over here. No need to worry about it. Let me go back. We have the icon packs right here and these are the options. I have been using it with the Akira's one and Vaulty calling and stuff will be working fine here. No need to worry. And we have these many icon shapes. And as you can see, we have the signal icon styles as well. Just notice how many options are there for just the signal icon styles. This is just huge. We also have the Wi-Fi icon styles as well. And then again, it's a huge amount of customization. And there is the brightness slider style, but there is only the default option as of now. And there is the data icon styles, and these are the options for that. Let me go back. We have the lock screen customization. We have the double tap to sleep gesture, and you can actually enable this one so that you get the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the status bar both. If you don't enable this, you will not get the double tap to sleep. So make sure once you've set up the ROM, go into the customization settings and enable this one to get the double tap to sleep working. And there is the edge lighting. Yes, that is actually working fine. We have the screen of animation as well. And we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration, ripple effect and the lock screen charging info. Then in the status bar, we have the 4G icon, the show data disabled icon, the brightness control. By sliding a finger on the status bar, you can control that. We have the show notification count, the colored icons and the quick setting, quick pull down options are there. And we have the icon managers as well from here. We have the battery style and just notice plethora of options are here for the battery styles. You can get the iOS 16 style and I have been using it with that. And this is how it looks like with that. Just notice how beautiful it looks. There is a battery percentage. You can enable it next to the icon and we have the traffic indicators as well. You can use it if you want. Then the clock styles, you can have it on right, left or center. And even the clock and date customization is there. And you can actually customize the clock font size from right here if you want to. In the quick settings, we have the height quick setting in secure lock screen. For privacy, we have the height status bar, haptic feedback. And the clock font size, you can actually change. And this is how big it is right now because I think I have customized it earlier. We have the data usage and we have the brightness slider position. You can have it on show always and the position to the bottom so that you get the brightness slider always at the bottom so it's handy. We have the auto brightness icon as well. In the gestures, we have these kind of system kind of gestures, which I have already showed you, I think. In the miscellaneous settings, we have the enable advanced restart, ignore window secure flags, 
make heads up less annoying and then the in-call vibration options also appear we have the game space again in the customization settings now that's it for the customizations of this particular build so let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the latest project legs of version 4 and i think this is one of the best optimized rom that you can flash if you want customizations and if you like this white kind of quick setting panel and all thank you so much for watching this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet please share this video with your friends if you like this particular rom this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.